the way that I was able to grow that quickly was that I didn't do it on my own. No, I built a sure. team. I built a business and I built some partnerships with people who I knew, liked, and trusted. And they had an experience and expertise to be able to go out and do that. Hello and welcome to Pillars of Wealth Creation, where we talk about creating financial success with a special focus on business and real estate. I'm your host, Todd Dexheimer. Now, let's get to it. Hello and welcome back to Pillars of Wealth Creation. I'm your host, Todd Dexheimer. With me today, I'm excited to have Stephen Pasavento. Stephen, how are you doing today? I am doing awesome. How are you doing, Todd? Fantastic, man. Fantastic. And I'm uh, excited to speak with you. We've met, uh, talked for, uh, at a conference a little bit. Uh, we share the uh, basically the same city. We were uh, born and raised. Uh, you were just across the other side of town uh, as me, but uh, and, and now no longer live there, unfortunately. But you live in a, a great community in Denver, which actually I would love to live in as well. So, <laughs> uh, Stephen is the host of the Investor Mindset Podcast, an active investor who's flipped over 150 homes within the, his first two years in the business. He's based out of Denver, manages a team out of state, and is an expert at finding and funding deals through his top of the charts podcast and the mindset members community he's brought together investors focused on the on personal and business growth with the common belief that investing in yourself leads to the biggest roi through modeling others he was able to escape the corporate grind of management consulting by focusing on building better beliefs better habits and taking better action with that Oof, we got that out. Yeah, definitely. That's been my, my thing focusing on, Hey, how can we all improve? How can we all get better? You know, I'm a young yeah. guy was able to do, you know, now at this point, 200 deals, you know, since I got started just three years ago, but awesome. you know, it really comes down to having the right mindset. And that's really why we focus so much of our effort and energy on the podcast in that space is, you know, once you get your mind in the right place, then all the tactic and strategies you learn, can actually start to come together. Awesome. And, and like, did it start there or like, give, give me kind of your background. Like you were, you grew up in, in Minnesota. Um, was it, were you raised with a family that really had that mindset or like, how did that develop? You know, I was uh, raised in a family with a lot of love, but a lot of volatility. And uh, you know, my parents got, you know, remarried multiple times, multiple different fathers coming through the house. Uh, and, you know, my dad was always here, but everyone in my family was really coming from this kind of middle class mindset, this, this mindset of, you know, working class of being servers or, you know, framers or salespeople, but coming from this perspective of, of, of limits, of not having abundance, of playing things safe. Uh, and I had one person in my family, my grandfather, who was an entrepreneur. And he owned a, an insurance company and he was very successful. And I always looked up and I thought, you know, someday I need to, this is the path I need to take because I want to live a life like him. He had a big house, hmm. happy guy, didn't seem stressed out about money all the time like my family was. And so, you know, I didn't grow up around having all these role models, but what I did was I started jumping into books. And very early on when I was in high school, I got introduced to Rich Dad, Poor Dad, like so many people do. You know, early in college, got introduced to Tim Ferriss. And it really just changed my view of what's possible in the world. And I always knew I wanted to figure out how to hustle to get out of that space because I, I was committed to not living that way, to not living in that kind of, a, you know, relationships within family, within you know, the financial situation, not wanting to worry about money. And, you know, I'm sure still not out of it. I'm in a much better place than I was then, but I'm still worrying about money because it's something that doesn't go away just because you make more of it. And it comes back to the mindset piece, which is how I've been able to build the business that I've built. I'm happy to talk more about kind of where that discovery came from, if it's helpful. Yeah, I think it'd be, I think it's very helpful. I mean, look, you said rich dad, poor dad, you read in high school. Like, why? Why, why read that's, that's, that's not, that's not like a high school kid book, right? Yeah. It, it, uh, out, out of all the, the ironies here, my father had gotten this book from somebody else and he read it. He was like, you need to read this. 
you need to break out of this mm-hmm. kind of thinking. And even though he never took steps to go down that path and I re-gifted it to him for Christmas three years ago when I got started, the same book that he gave me and said, you got to read this. It's time to change that, change that way of thinking and start becoming an owner instead of an employee. But, uh, you know, where it really all came together for me was, you know, I want to say it was about five, eight years ago. I, you know, I had some of these books that I had read, some of these experiences. I was kind of on this path, but I had this moment where I had extreme headaches. It was for two years. They were, you know, on a one to five scale. It was like a two or three in pain every single day. It was, it was really bad. And it was during this time that I was trying everything I could. Because when you're in pain, when you're in a really bad place, the same as not having money growing up or having all that worry. And I was in this physical pain. I, 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 things that went through my head was accept it. Cool, I'll just accept it. And I'm not going to be able to work a normal job. I'm going to be in, you know, not be able to use my mind the way that I have been my whole life. You know, I was kind of searching for answers, high and low. And, you know, I really started diving into, you know, some folks back into Tim Ferriss into Tony Robbins, into some people who were living a life that was so much grander than the one that I was experiencing right then. And I started to realize that a lot of the pain that I was dealing with, even though it was in my body, I was creating it. My my mind was creating it. It seems crazy and you guys can believe it or not, but as we continue to advance over the next 10 years, I think it'll be clear to everybody. But I had these moments of realizing that, oh, I was on this path that wasn't serving me and serving my mind. And I was out of alignment with who I was meant to be. And, you know, it sounds really frou-frou, but what's crazy about it was that I had this spiritual experience. um, And what came out of it was literally right after that, I started my real estate business. The first year I grew to over 75 deals and I stayed consistent on that path until this past year when we changed our model to better fit the life that I am building now. And so uh, it really comes down to once you can get really clear on what it is that you want, why you want it, and then put together a legitimate plan of how you're gonna get there, that you can start seeing that alignment happen for yourself, and it's almost like these blockages are, you know, just removed. And I skyrocketed in this direction and had a lot of growth and success, and it was a lot of fun, and I learned a lot. And, you know, then you hit a new plateau. And it's these moments in our life is where the biggest changes happen in our business, And I think anybody has gone through that at some point, but maybe you're just not as conscious of it. And so I'm encouraging you by sharing this story to kind of think back, like, when was there a time where something unlocked that I, you know, it seemed like I was working on it forever, but then right in that moment, it just became true. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. So you said there's a a model you're building right now, a different model. You've done, first of all, you did 150 flips in your first two years. You've done 200 now in three years. I mean, that's a ton. I did for, from coming from a guy who's done 150 flips uh, in way more than two years. Uh, by the way, uh, that's a lot of flips. Uh, talk us through like, how did you go from nothing to those flips, and then the model of the business now? So that's a lot there for you to talk about. But let's just let you. Yeah, know. I think. I, I think there's a couple things here. Uh, you know, some of those flips were wholesale. Some of them were wholesale. Some of them were full blown renovations. Some of them were new construction projects. Some of them were land or You're doing lot a little splits. Bit of everything. So we were doing a little bit of everything. But yeah. the way that I was able to grow that quickly was that I didn't do it on my own. No, I built a sure. team. I built a business and I built some partnerships with people who I knew, liked, and trusted. And they had an experience and expertise to be able to go out and do that. So I had a partner in North Carolina, which was my main market. I was doing deals both in Minnesota and North Carolina at the same time with two separate partners, which I don't necessarily recommend starting out with two separate partners, but it was the, the, the way that I hedged my bets and uh, it ended up working out because I ended up growing quite a bit. But the way that I went about that was that first, I found some mentors to learn from. I found some people to learn from for free, which I traded my skill set of web development and digital marketing to be able to follow some folks around and be able to model what they were doing. I paid for some mentorship where I joined a mastermind and a coaching community where I was able to learn and directly model other people's business. 
And then I built some partnerships with people who had the skills that I was looking for and then built a team around those people to go out and build the businesses that I was modeling. And so, you know, in that first year, it was a straight hustle from day one. Like I didn't have any money. I maybe had 1,500, 2,000 bucks in my bank account. I was renting my house on Airbnb one to two weeks out of a month just to pay rent so that I could continue to build this business. And so I was willing to make those sacrifices because I knew why I was going in the direction and what I was trying to accomplish. And so it didn't matter if I made a shit ton of money or a lot of money right off the bat. What mattered was that I was learning this skill set and growing. And so, you know, it took probably launched our first marketing in North Carolina in, in uh, like October. And it took all the way until February, four months before I had, uh, you know, made money on real estate. And I started my journey in May of that year. So, you know, that's a good chunk of time where I had fired all of my current clients. I had no other way to make money other than Airbnb. And I was all in, in this, in this direction. And so when you go all in, when you get really clear and you decide to start a business, not just a hustle, and you put yourself in and you start going out and hiring the right people and you have the right mentorship in place, it's almost inevitable that you'll find success as long as you don't give up because mm -hmm. there were so many times where I could have said, ah, oh, this won't work. Or I made another phone call and it failed. But at the end of the day, once you start seeing those little micro successes, that first $4,500 check that I had, that first wholesale of a property that took me months to sell because it was a junk deal, it was like, like the clouds parted, the sun came out, and all of a sudden I realized like, wow, this is real. Like I can do this real estate thing. And then I had that belief inside. So before I was, I was taking on someone else's belief that it's possible, I was modeling what they were doing, but then I confirmed my own belief that I was capable of doing this. And I think that no matter where you are as a listener, where you are in your business, there's a place where you want to go. And you first need to take that belief from someone else and say, well, hey, if they're doing it, I can do it. I can figure out a way. And then as you get that experience, as you actually succeed at doing that thing after many failures, that belief will start to build inside yourself where you actually know like, hey, I believed I could do it and I can see that I know I can do it because I've done it. Yeah. Yeah. That's so, so valuable. Did you ever have a time where you felt like giving up within those first four months? Or you just committed? Oh. oh, oh, I mean, there was definitely times where there was a little bit of doubt that would creep in, but I had to push it down really quickly. I couldn't yeah. let it, I couldn't let it fester for more than just a moment. I mean, there was definitely people around me who were saying, Steven, what are you doing? Yeah. You left a job in management consulting. You left a job in tech. You're making more money than your peers. You're on a path that is the path you want to be on if you're a business person, typically out of college you know, uh, to go and consult and work with some of the biggest companies. But to me, I had a different vision of what life was about. I had a different vision about creating this lifestyle. Uh, and so I had to find a way to make it happen. And this wasn't my first rodeo at trying to make that happen. This was the rodeo that worked. This is the time I stayed on the horse and rode it out. I got bucked off plenty of other times with failed startups or failed hustles or little micro ventures that only lasted a little while. But this was the one where I hit it and I found my groove and I was able to really make things work. Um, let's, let's talk about those because that's kind of fun. So <laughs> these failed uh, ventures, like maybe you could either go into detail, give me an example, or just tell me kind of what, what were some of the lessons learned? What were some of the mistakes that you made? Why, why were they failures? Well, I think there was this one this one deal in particular, this, uh, I had a startup, it was called QuickBox. It was an on-demand storage company. And the idea behind it was that you, we would come to your house, we'd pick up all of your items, we'd pack them up, we'd take photos of all the items, and we'd put them in storage. And when you wanted those items back, you'd click a few buttons on an Amazon-like interface, and we'd deliver it back to your house within a few days. And so it was kind of like you had this storage locker where you know, it was on-demand storage. And so yeah. we had started this concept in Boulder, Colorado, a small little tech hub of Boulder. And we had rolled it out and we were working on this project, you know, for just about a year. And we had, you know, a number of clients. We were doing tire storage. We were 
really learning how do we take on customers? How do we build a team? How do we build uh, a company? And, you know, through that process, there was some realizations. There was the realization of, wow, this idea could make us a lot of money. And to be clear, there's a company called Makespace. There's a company called Boxby. Look them up. They've been funded hundreds of millions of dollars for this exact same idea. We we're all working on this right around the same time. There's a company right out of uh, Colorado called Closet Box, which now you guys will see all around the country. Same exact concept. Uh, the difference was these folks, they knew why they were doing it. We were doing it because we wanted to start a startup because we wanted to be entrepreneurs and because we wanted to make a lot of money. And there was somewhere along the line where there was a realization that I had, and it was part of the personal development that I was talking about, or I had this realization of, well, why am I doing this? Well, I'm not doing it for the right reasons. Can I, can I change my view? Can I start looking at this from a perspective that I can really start holding on to wholeheartedly with my values? And the answer was no, I couldn't get on board with it. I didn't believe in the concept of storage. And from a real estate play, sure, yes. Um, but from a, essentially a moving company play, it wasn't really lining up with what I wanted to build. And we were just at the point where we were going to start raising funds. But the other thing that happened was we had three founding partners. And one of those partners had a little bit of a breakdown. We'll just leave it at that. I had to fly out to San Francisco to go find this person because he stopped responding to messages. And our whole tech system was built upon his code. So when that happened, we had a, we had a choice to make. Do we, do we keep going? The two partners who were, you know, working really well together is still one of my best friends today. Or do we pivot and shift directions? Do we say we learned a lot from this experience, but we're going to shut it down. We're going to give our customers their money back, their property back. We're going to convert them, you know, into some kind of transition plan. And we're going to go and do something different. And it was a hard choice to make because it sure felt like failure in the moment. But as soon as I changed that view to this isn't failure, this is success because I'm getting more in alignment with, with what actually matters. Yeah. And I learned a lot through the process. Um, it, it ended up making me so much more empowered that even though I'd spent a year of my life doing this and sure we made some money and we sold off what we had at the end, but it wasn't, it wasn't what we were shooting for. We definitely didn't want to turn around and shut the company down. But when we looked at each other, we just said, you know, we've got a lot left in us. We're young guys. We want to make sure that we're putting our time, effort, and energy into the right places. And so I'm grateful that we made that decision because it unlocked so many more experiences in my life. Uh, but at the time, it was hard because when you're in it, you're thinking to yourself, oh, I don't want to be that guy or what are other people going to think? Or you know, trying to compare yourself to somebody else. But when you can come back and say, well, what do I really want? What's important to me? What matters? And when you can own that truth for yourself, it's a lot more uh, powerful than when you're trying to own someone else's. Yeah. That, and those are powerful words right there. That's, I think any entrepreneur who's, you know, been in it and seen success and uh, they've got a lot of people telling them that, you know, they're doing things the wrong way or they should be considering this or whatever it is. I mean, I had so many people tell me I was crazy and stupid investing in real estate. I it's just like, you can't even, you know, you lose count of how many people said it. Um, but you've got to do what's true to you and what's going to get you up in the morning, right? What, what you're going to be excited about. And uh, ultimately that business wasn't, the right one for you. It didn't, it didn't uh, mesh well enough and it was time to move on. So, um, and I'm sure it, and it's hard, it's hard for a lot of people, especially, you know, I mean, that business probably, probably a good thing. It wasn't extremely profitable yet. It was still fairly young, but as it becomes more and more profitable, it's even harder and harder to leave. Um, but you, sometimes you've got to make those decisions. Um, so give, give our, you've been given a lot of really good things. Uh, one of the things I like to talk about is in, in this and in real estate investors obviously like to worry about the next transaction, which, um, which is what propels your business forward to an extent. But we want to talk about how do you create the success habits around that business to make sure it's sustainable, right? It's not just the next deal that we're looking at. So what are some success habits that you've learned that you've been able to take 
um, that you could pass on to our listeners, maybe two or three uh, success habits. Yeah, I'm happy to talk about some success habits. I think one of the things that people can do right off the bat is they can just sit down and they can start asking themselves these three questions. What do they want? Why do they want it? And how are they going to get there? And save that last one for, for later once you've got really clear on the what and the why. Because when you can get that kind of clarity, it really is going to help you start taking those daily actions on a consistent basis in the way that you really need to. And I'll share this with your audience as well. If it's valuable, you guys can go grab it. Uh, if you head over to the investormindset.com slash values, put together kind of a three-part masterclass series. And what it really is diving down into is understanding where you're at today in your life, being able to rate and understand how you're doing, how you're feeling, how each of these different areas of your life are, um, and then putting them on paper so you can understand how am I going to get myself where I want to be. And when we combine those two pieces together, the what we want and why we want it, and we have an assessment of how we're actually doing today, and we can use that assessment to check in with ourselves on a weekly or monthly basis, we can really start seeing big changes. And so you know, that's totally free. Uh, I believe there's an opt-in, but you know, you'll get access to the videos right then and there. Um, but the, the things that I do on a daily basis is that I sit down and I take that list of my, of what I'm looking to do and that purpose behind it. And I break my days down into the actions that are going to help me fulfill that. Yeah. So an example, I have uh, a couple businesses, but one of them, I go and buy houses and I sell houses. And right now we're not flipping any houses. We're focused on wholesaling for a lot of good reasons that are specific to me and my business. Um, but so I have some actions and activities that are going to help me grow that business. Are the leads coming in? Are my team working on, you know, sales as they should? Am I getting the updates that I'm expecting? And so every single day I'm checking in and understanding, well, is, am I making prop? Uh, progress towards that goal. You know, in the other part of my business, you know, how am I doing as far as the video creation, as far as the content creation that's going out to help serve people with the investor mindset and the rest of the communities that I'm building. And so there's a set of goals, which is the high level thing. And then my daily actions that I'm doing, and I'm creating that list every single day. So I, when I wake up, I know, well, today I've got X, Y, Z, I've got a knockout. And these are the things that if I accomplish these, it's going to help move that boulder forward of my ultimate goal. And so that's just one really big overarching thing. And the other two things that you guys already know about, but I probably guarantee some of you guys aren't doing because I fall into this from time to time and need to be reminded is sitting down and meditating for 10 minutes every day. Just sit down and meditate. Be mindful because it ends up opening up all of this creative space to really run your business more effectively uh, and increases so much in your personal life, which ends up increasing your business life and then move for 10 minutes a day. And I like to go for a run. Maybe you're into yoga, maybe you're into something else. But I think if you can start out with some mindset, you can get yourself really clear on what it is that you're doing, why you're doing it. Yeah. Uh, you can uh, meditate, you can move, and you've got that map of the day, man, you're going to be set. Yep. Yep. And one of the, one of the reasons I love running is because I can kind of meditate while I run as well. And mm -hmm. so it's even clears your mind even more. You, you've done your prayer meditation and now you go for your run and it clears your mind. Even mm -hmm. more. Uh, so that's, and, and really exercising in general, if you, if you do it right, you can really clear your mind. There is studies that show that when you, meditate and then go for a run or if you run and then meditate that those two combined together make it dramatically more powerful yeah because yeah doesn't surprise me doesn't surprise me at all yeah cool stuff um how do people step back right so we all think we got to learn so much about the nuts and bolts of our business, the nuts and bolts of real estate investing. Like, but you're talking so much about how to focus on your mindset and how that's really more important uh, than learning or as important or more important. You, you can clarify that, I guess. 
Um, so how, how do you actually do that? Because we want to push forward, right? We want to be successful. We want to not make these mistakes. So how do we focus on our mindset when we should think we should be focusing on our business? Yeah, so I think the two are intertwined. And so when people say it's an either or, uh, I think they're wrong. And here's why. And here's why I think, think people are wrong when they say either or. If you yourself as an individual person, as the leader in your business, even as an employee in someone else's business, if you're not in the right state of mind, if you don't have the right thoughts and beliefs, you're not going to take the right actions in your business. So I can teach you every strategy on how to go buy and wholesale houses, on how to go to buy and flip houses. Mm-hmm. I can teach you, you know, how to build influence. I can, I can teach you how to do a podcast, but you're not going to do any of it if you believe that you're not capable of it. If yeah. you believe that you don't have the skill or that there's some fear or anchor that's holding you back, you're not going to do any of it. So that's the thing that ends up getting in our way when we're trying to grow our business. It's usually our mind. It's usually these thoughts and beliefs that end up holding us back from what we're really capable of. And so, yes, strategies and tactics are critically important. The technical side of running a business is important. It's, it's a must. I'm not saying you can't have it. You need both, but you got to have your mind in the right place for you to actually be able to apply that stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I found that to be true in my business and I'm sure you found it to be true in your business. I mean, we might, we might have all the answers or a lot of the answers already be skilled. And all of a sudden you see somebody else doing it and you're like, Whoa, like I've, I've known this business for like three years. How are they all of a sudden at that spot? And you're going, what? Oh yeah. Cause I didn't have my mind right. Like I wasn't set up for it. I wasn't ready for it. And I didn't pay attention to, building that part of my brain. I just paid attention to building the knowledge part. So totally. Um, well, cool. Tons, tons of stuff. I, I I think there's one thing I just want to build off of that. And, uh, it's something I hear about all the time. Right. And I, I fall into this myself. It's this knowledge trap. It's this trap of feeling like you need to learn one more thing Yeah, that you need to like, listen to one more podcast episode, or you need to read one more book or you need to do one more course. And if you just did that, then you'd actually be ready to go. Then you'd be ready to take action and start making a change in your life. Yep. The truth is those courses and the podcasts and the books are critical to laying a foundation. But if you listen to it and you don't do anything, yeah. you're wasting your, time. wasting your time. Because yes, put some stuff in your mind let it kind of soak in. That's the baseline, but you need to be taking action on some of this information so that you can actually start to move it from hearing it to knowing it and having it be a part of your core. So I just want to remind people to kind of get back to the core of like, learn something and then apply, even if it's just the tiniest little thing. Yeah. Yeah. And having people around you is, is very important. I mean, that was one of the biggest things for me to push me to the next level was, it was really just my mentor said, why, why aren't you ready for it? Like, cause I, I kept on saying, well, I'll, I'll eventually get there. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll get to buying larger units. And finally he's like, well, you're ready right now. Why, why aren't you ready right now? Mm. And it was like, Oh yeah. Okay. You're right. You know, so, so having people there and, and having the, you know, community that you've built and stuff like that is so important to, you know, push people beyond, their limiting beliefs. We all have these limiting beliefs and being able to get past it, which is what you've been kind of preaching on the whole time here. So I have a question for you, Todd, like you've been building, you've been doing some amazing things. You've got this phenomenal audience and thank you guys for being listeners of Todd's because you know, he's doing some incredible stuff. What are the things that you think have held you back in the past from being able to, you know, go out and, and grow at the level that you think you're capable of? I think a, a, a couple of things. I mean, getting comfortable, right? You get comfortable. It's really easy to get comfortable where you're at. I was doing, I was doing good. Like I was flipping a lot of houses. I was buying a lot of one to four family rental properties that were cash flowing really good. It was easy. Uh, so I got comfortable. I got fat and happy, you know? So, so that was probably one. And then that limiting belief, like eventually I want to get there, right? Eventually I want to buy a hundred or 200 unit building, but, you know, I need to get investors and investors don't want to, 
they probably don't trust me yet because you know I don't have mm. the experience and uh, so it's just these limiting beliefs behind you know I wasn't ready and I was always didn't matter how much I had done it was always I needed to do a little bit more right I always did need mm-hmm. to do uh, I ended up buying you know 10 to 20 you know those smaller buildings and I always needed to buy a little bit more before I really stepped up my game to the next level. So I think that was it. I just, you know, beyond the fat and happy and you always need to do just a little bit more before you take that next step. And so I'd ask a question to the audience, everyone listening. I'm curious how many of you have felt the same way Todd has at some yeah. point in your career, whether you've either felt really comfortable because you're, you got to the place that you wanted to get to, or you felt like you couldn't really go where you wanted to go until you just did one more. I know I've been there and heck, I'm sitting there day to day. You know, I've got to jump back out of that place on a regular basis because it's so easy to fall into. Yeah. And uh, that's what's great is that you can. And look, yeah. now you are. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Cool. Uh, Steven, a couple more questions before we wrap up. Uh, how do you like to give back? Well, I like to give back just in the same way we're, we're talking right now. I really love helping other people kind of unlock their true potential, understanding like what's capable, like what they're capable of and how to build the business that they want. And most of my clients kind of all fall into that category. And I also work with junior achievement. I'll go and, you know, talk in schools, big fan of, you know, helping people at a younger age, start having somebody in their life who will come in and, you know, speak a little bit differently to them, maybe yeah. show them a different path. Um, and it's really empowering to see that light turn on in a kid's eyes that says, well, maybe there's another way. Right. Yep. Yep. Junior Achievement's awesome. I love that organization as well. Um, what's a favorite book you can recommend? Uh, there's a lot of favorite books. One of my favorites right now is The Go-Giver, which is sitting behind me if you guys are watching on video. Um, but a couple others that are really notable. I had Chris Voss on the podcast recently. If you guys like Chris, you should go check out that episode on the investor mindset. Uh, I've read that book like 10 or 15 times. So it was an honor to be able to, you know, serve him and have him on the show. Um, and, uh, you know, there's so many, anything by Tim Ferriss is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. He's got a lot of good stuff out there. Cool. Um, last question I've got for you and you've maybe already covered this, but we're going to have to say it again or maybe come up with some new stuff here. What are your three pillars of wealth creation? My three pillars of wealth creation. What a great question. I think the, the first pillar is get your mind in the right place. You know, start to really change those thoughts and beliefs. Start to really change the way that you're thinking. Uh, you know, get your body in the right place, the energy. So, you want your mind to be good. You want to be emotionally strong. And then you want to be, you have your body be physically strong. So you have the energy to actually go and execute these things, the things you actually need to do. And then there's the technical side, right? Is learning all of the strategies and applying them in your life. And so when you got your mind right, when you got your, your energy right, and when you're actually you've got the skills to go and execute and build the kind of life of wealth that you want, anything's possible. Love that you hit on well, all three of them, but on the body part. And so many of us, I think, neglect that and forget that that's, that's like our energy cell, right? That's going to keep us mm-hmm. going. That's the power cord to actually let the computer, you know, run and function. But if we don't have that, man, disaster can happen. Mm, so true. Uh, awesome. Steven, how can our listeners get in touch with you? Well, I would recommend you guys head over to Instagram and follow me at steven.pesavento on Instagram or head over to the investormindset.com slash values. Grab that little freebie. Uh, I think you guys will actually really love it. Um, And if you do love it, obviously check out the podcast, anything else we're doing. Cool. Awesome. Well, definitely appreciate you joining us on the show. Tons of value. Uh, You're able to add. Really appreciate it. And uh, have a fantastic rest of the day. Amazing. You too, my friend. A special thanks to Josh McCallan. I appreciate him joining us on the show. A couple of things I took from this episode. First of all, you know, he talks about uh, not having greed, right? And it's so easy to think about the profits, think about how much money we're going to make instead of the difference 
uh, that we can make, instead of the impact that we can make, instead of making it just everything better for the people that we're trying to influence. So think about that first. Don't think about the money. The next thing he talked about is focus on moving to a team of operators and with structured discipline. Uh, and then the last thing that he talked about is just knowing your business why, understanding your business why, what you're trying to achieve, what you're trying to do. And uh, it, it, he also mentioned, you know, just trying to put that in, in your actual name, if you can put that into the name of your company. Um, so just understanding that. So again, appreciate Josh joining us on the show, a ton of value and, and a really fun uh, interview, just a different business model than uh, most people are, are running. Um, and uh, just a lot of fun to hear him talk about it. And obviously the passion he has about it. So again, thanks a lot, Josh, for joining us. And you have a fantastic rest of the day. Make every day a Saturday. Hey, thanks so much for listening. I appreciate you being a loyal listener. Say, I would love to have you go on to our Facebook page and subscribe. Uh, give us a thumbs up. Go on to iTunes or wherever you listen and give us a rating and review. Don't forget to subscribe. But your rating and review just helps us push this out to more and more people and continue to grow our audience and hopefully positively affect a ton of people out there that really need this and, and want this. So uh, the other thing I've got for you is a free ebook on my website. So go on to venturedproperties.com, venturedproperties.com and download our free ebook uh, on real estate and on syndication. And I've got some data points in there, some really good stuff for you. So I'd love to have you take a look at that. It's free. I'm not expecting anything from it. Uh, and, and also look, if you want some help in multifamily, want some help learning, growing, getting your business off the ground, I would love to talk to you about what it would look like, uh, to work with me potentially and see if that's a good fit. So you can go up to coachwithdex.com and check that out. And, uh, we can definitely have a, uh, a call. Thanks a lot for listening. You make it a fantastic rest of the day. I'll catch you on the next episode.